for this day, Lord, for giving us a day to rest, a day to fellowship, to worship you, Father. I pray, Lord, that your presence will be here with us. I pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit as we continue to lift up our worship this time, as we continue to give this time to you, Lord. I pray that you will protect us uh, with your precious blood and you be a wall of fire around us today, Lord, so that we can focus on you, Father, and we will put so we cannot be distracted, Father. I pray that you will bless my husband, Lord, Father God, for your message for today, and may you receive our worship, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for always loving us, always blessing and protecting us in every area that we need, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you so much for my beautiful wife who helped me set up all of our equipment, Lord. And I thank you for her stewardship and her friendship, her partnership, Lord. I pray that you would anoint Melody Song with all manner of visions, dreams, giftings, abilities, singings, and musical talents of all kinds. I pray that you would give her a strong mind of wisdom, understanding, patience, and love. I pray that you would continue to always put her at my side to be a good helpmate as you made the wife in the Bible the helpmate. I thank you that she joins me in all of my endeavors and Lord I pray that you would continue to just strengthen the bond and unity of all the relationships here. I pray that you would just be like a glue to their marriages and to their relationships. I pray that you be like a binding glue and I pray that you always be the peace in between them, no matter whatever challenges they have to overcome or whatever missions they have to accomplish, whether the mission be great or whether the mission be very simple, as simple as cooking a meal, I pray that they would operate as teams. And I pray also that you would strengthen the body of Christ in our community and making us as like a bond and glue and teams. As we've started our fourth, our fourth small group, and we have four small group teams now, I pray that this week be the launching point week for them in a strong way. Many of them have already started and to great success, to great success in pressing forth in your presence, following your agenda, your plans, following your spirit and letting your spirit guide them. I thank you so much for helping them and being with them. And Lord, I pray that you would just continue to anoint them and grow them and let them flourish. Let us be an evangelistic tool. Let us be an evangelistic tool for where you are sending us and to the people from where we are sent. No matter where we are physically, in the spirit, may we be there where we need to be. And even though we use platforms and online domains and we're traveling over the internet we're still traveling so i pray that you would anoint them and be with them because we need you lord we need your spirit we need your presence lord we need your love we need your friendship in our life we're nothing without you god we're just people but we need you and when we provide the natural and you provide the super we get the supernatural here on earth Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray everybody who's joining us this morning with this opening prayer, Father, I pray that we would all press into that supernatural. The times are coming when the natural and the, the supernatural will be the commonplace and overtake the natural. And the times are coming when we people will look for a God, a real God, and He will show Himself faithful and he will show himself and manifest his strength and his power for all who are willing to turn for all who seek him they will find him and i'm excited about this type of future for all of us and for our teams and our families i also know that the days of evil are coming on the earth but by your grace you give us the years of abundance you give us the preparation you give us the wisdom to move past and hallelujah, we love you for that. Because Lord, without you and without your provision, what can we do? We need the blessing of the Lord. We need your blessing, Lord. We, I was at a pastor's meeting yesterday and they had 
so many visions and dreams that they were doing. And I told the pastors, if the Lord doesn't provide, we cannot worry. We have to just seek the Lord's provision. These visions that you have are bigger than us. So we have to trust the Lord. There's no other thing we can do. Why worry? But trust the Lord. And this is what I spoke to them. And this is what I speak to our team. From all the things that we worry about. There's things that we just cannot do anything about. Except for be in position and seek the Lord. And trust the Lord. Because you have to do it. The visions are too beyond us. If it happens, it's because you're going to help it happen. We'll be ready to follow your leading. We'll be ready to follow your guidance. We'll be seeking you. We'll be in your presence. We'll be doing the natural things we need to do. But where we end is where you begin. So show us, Lord, where we end and where you begin. There, there's wind and waves and there's the boat. We can manage a boat, but the wind and the waves, we have no power over except by your hand. Because by your hand, by your spirit, by your name, by your power, you sustain. And Lord, by you, we're able to calm the winds and the waves. We're able to step into the supernatural. We need your hand. We need your spirit, God, to be the part that we cannot do by ourselves because the vision is too great. And because of that, all the glory and honor will belong to you. What can we say? How did we get this far? How did we make it? We cannot say anything except we made it by you. And that's how we want to testify in our future, in our life. That's how we want to live, God. We want to be able to say, <clears throat> it was by you, by your hand, by your mighty hand we survived. By your mighty hand we made it through. By your mighty hand we overcome. It was our God who saved and no one else. So that man not be the glory. That man might not be the glory. But that you will receive the glory and be glo the glorious one. For what can we say? All we did was participate. And even that by your mercy. For we are unworthy servants. But by your very choosing you put us there. Lord. Make us to be healthy in your spirit. Bring our spirits to health. Bring our spirits not to rot. Bring our bodies not to rot. But bring us the protection from all of the evil plans of the enemy. Cover our bodies. Cover our minds and our spirits with a strong health and protection, Lord. Give us your powerful protection. In your wonderful presence. We trust your name. Our team is here praying, Lord, because we want you and your spirit. It is by your power, by your name that we are sustained. We need you. There's no one else we can turn to. And how we trust you, Lord. How we love you. Our times are in your hands. Our children are in your hands. Our spouses, our families, even our animals are in your hands. We have to trust you, even for the littlest things. But maybe that's where you want us to be during these times. Maybe that's where you want us at these moments, to trust you with the little things. Because if we can trust you in the little things, we will trust you in the big things. For the Bible says, he who is faithful and little will be blessed and made ruler over much. So we love you, Lord. Make us the ruler over much. Make us the faithful in the little. Make us to be your obedient children. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You sing with me? All right, team. Thank you, Roy. Royal's going to have us share something really special. I believe it's connected to a dream. He's going to share it at the end. Let's sing this song called Father of Light. I hope you guys enjoy it.
Yeah. 
relationship with you isn't one-sided. We don't want you to be the only one who loves us in this relationship. So we come to you, Lord, with hearts filled with your presence, filled with our own love for you. Let us pour out our love when we sing, when we dance, when we play. As imperfect as we are, we give you that love. And this morning, Lord, before the service, before the word goes forth, we're singing to you. We love you. I love you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen, team. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Melody, thank you so much for singing with us. It's beautiful. You sing good. You do. A lot better. My voice all raspy. <clears throat> you guys get raspy J song today. That's what you get. That's what you get for subscribing. That's what you get. That's what you get. I got a great message for you guys today. Today we are, I wanted to finish up our series. I need your help. Thank you. I wanted to finish up the series for you guys, How to Hear from God, but as the Lord allows it, I ask him, Lord, what am I supposed to minister on? He needs to preach the message. I said, I'll preach the message so you guys get to hear the message being preached. So, let's turn our Bibles to our first scripture of the day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up having Melody share the others on the screen, delegating a lot of our responsibilities. We are going to go into testing the spirits revisited. And then after that, we're going to go into, we're going to go into some of the other parts which is waiting upon the Lord. But I need to go back into testing the spirits. And we need to braid from the Bible. So let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 13. I don't have it on here, so if you want to turn on there, Melody, go ahead. 1 Kings chapter 13. And I'm going to read you guys a story. And I hope you are blessed. And after that, let's go through. We still got some content I want to give you guys. So I'm doing my best to get you all the content for this. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Adrian. 1 Kings chapter 13. And if you guys don't know where 1 Kings at, it's right before 2 Kings. You have to flip open like that. Sometimes you get two jokes for the price of one. I was at a pastor's meeting the other day, and I look over, and some of the young people and some of the young pastors were all playing the, this game called Mobile Legends. It's like, a, I guess, a phone, cell phone game. And, uh, and I said to him, I said to him, I said, hey, do you, uh, do you have a Nintendo Switch? And he goes, no. I said, do you have an Xbox? He goes, no, I don't have one. I said, ask me. He goes, do you have an Xbox? I said, no, I have a Y box. And he looked at me like, that's silly. Why? Why? And I said, exactly. Why? And he looked at me and then he was like, ah. See, he fell for two jokes in one. That's, a, that's what we call a twofer. A twofer. So this is going to be the Bible version. We're reading from the Bible version. First Kings. I better be careful. If the corn is too, if the corn is too corny, then I can be crucified in my own soup. You'll be boiled in your own pudding. Jeroboam warned. First Kings chapter 13, let's start at verse 1. And it says, now behold, now behold, a man of God 
from Judah to Bethel, there came a man of God from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, while Jeroboam the king was standing by the altar to burn incense. <clears throat> he cried against the altar by the word of the Lord, and he said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and on you he shall sacrifice the priest of the high places who burn incense on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. Now this is at a time when Jeroboam was basically taking the places of God and using them for his own purposes. And he was doing evil things by offering incense to other gods and he was entreating other gods and he was basically communicating with demonic spirits to try to get an answers for his heart's desires. And, and many people were doing such things. And this man of God came and said, there's going to be a, a somebody named Josiah, a son born who's one of the lineage of the kings. He's going to be a king and this king is going to sacrifice the bodies of the people who were burning incense. These evil people. He's going to burn the incense on you. And the king he got angry when he heard this. Listen. Then he gave a sign. Oh, sorry, verse 3. Then he gave a sign by the same saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be split apart, and the ashes which are on it shall be poured out. So there was an altar that they made. The king was there. And the altar basically cracked in half, was supposed to crack in half, and the ashes that they were trying to offer these incense on to these false gods was split. Now when the king heard the saying of the man of God, verse 4, he cry, which the man of God cried against the altar in Bethel, then Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar saying, Seize him! Basically saying, Arrest him! But his hand, as he stretched it out, dried up, and he could not draw it back. So the hand basically became like really old and wilderly and dry, almost maybe like a stone. Very strange, like he'll say, seize him. And his own arm, he can't pull it back because it turns to stone. You got to imagine it. And he says, and the altar was also split apart and the ashes were poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had been given by the word of the Lord. So a moment that it happened, that the Lord spoke to him, it was actually not a time in the future that the altar would be split apart. But the sign happened right then and there. The altar was split apart. And the ashes were poured out. The king said to the man of God, Please entreat me, the Lord your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him. And it became as it was before. Lord, heal his hand, even though he tried to arrest me. Lord, heal his hand, and his hand was healed. And it became as it was before. Then the king said to the man, Come home with me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half of your house, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water in this place. For it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall eat no bread and drink no water. Or, nor shall I return by the way that which I came. And so he went another way and did not return by the way in which he came to Bethel. Let's talk for a second about this. The man of God, do you guys know why he was not to return the way he came? And do you know why he was not allowed to eat bread and drink water? I personally believe, maybe there's multiple reasons, but I personally believe, no, it wasn't because he was fasting. I personally believe it was because the Lord wanted him to have a part of his mission that this was one of those quick missions. Don't get comfortable. You're just going to deliver the message and you're going. In fact, you're a nobody. I don't want you to seek your own glory. It's not about you. I want you to just do what you're going to do and then you got to go. You understand? So what he was saying was the man of God went, but he couldn't go back by the way he came. Because then maybe people would be like, oh, where does that man of God come from? Oh, he comes from there. Let's go find. He's a nobody who comes from nowhere. The Bible doesn't even give him a name. 
It just says the man of God. That's all it says. Like in the Bible, there's lots of men of God and women of God or prophets, but they, usually they have names. This is one of the very few people in the Bible who doesn't have a name. He came from somewhere and left from somewhere. No one knows from which he came or where he went because they can't source his origin. And God didn't want him to source his origin. Come one way, don't even go home the second way. Don't leave a trace. It's not about you. And when you come from hearing God, I want you to be careful with getting cocky. Because there's people that operate in the spirit and they, don't, they get a little bit cocky. It's temptation for some. Oh, wow, well, look at me. I'm a leader now. I'm a pastor now. I'm a minister now. I'm a prophet now. Or I can prophesy. Or I have this. I, I don't care your gift. Because the Bible says the gifts of the Spirit are without repentance. Though anyone can have a gift. Just look at singers. There's a lot of singers in the world that are great singers. But they're going to hell in a handbasket. There are lots of singers who will just sing praises for the world. But what do they do for the Lord? What does it matter in eternity? Oh, wow, so he has a lot of money. Oh, praise God for this person who has a lot of money. What good does it do? Well, the Bible says, what, what is it for the man to inherit the whole world but lose his own soul? So it doesn't matter our gifts. Who we are could be taken away in one second. Job was the richest man of the East. He was so blessed, but in one moment, God took it all away. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And that's how we have to treat our gifts. Praise God for our gifts. Praise God if we're anointed. But let's give glory to the one who deserves the glory. Right? When we sing, we give glory to your name. Oh Lord. We, the glory goes to Him, not to us. What is that one song? To God be the glory. And that's to God who gets the glory. Now this man was also told not to eat bread and drink water. Don't stay long. The king's going to want you to come, but then you're going to get comfortable, then he's going to make you his own personal assistant. You're going to find yourself doing all these things that it's not for your mission, not for your purpose, has nothing to do with you. You're not supposed to get comfortable. But there are some times that we get in a position or we get comfortable, and then we actually start finding ourselves building up a ministry in a place that we're not supposed to build up a ministry or doing things and getting comfortable in places that God doesn't want us to get comfortable because that's not where we're supposed to be operating out of. It's it's nice if you can preach. I can preach. I get invited to preach at a lot of places. It doesn't mean I'm supposed to preach at all, all places. I went to a pastor's meeting yesterday. I went to the local church. I was like, I need to do some stuff for our church today, our, world, our word room ministry. And the pastor was like, oh, come and come to this leadership meeting. And I said, listen, pastor, I'll go with you to the meeting. But I need you to know. And I sat down with the wife. I said, I need you guys to know that I can't always be here. I have our own church. We have our own leaders. We just locked four small groups. I need to spend my time investing in our church people. I need to make sure that they're being trained and equipped, and I need to make sure that everything for our mission or for our purpose, I have our own people to worry about. I know you have this big old gathering that you're doing, the big annual gathering, and I know stuff, and I know that you want to put some of this on me, but listen, it's your church. I, I, I'm great. I'm coming here, but I'm coming only as a guest. I cannot get comfortable here. Let me give you another example. Maybe about seven years ago, I think about seven years ago, close to seven years ago, I had, right before I had started our church ministry, I think maybe eight years ago now, I can't remember. Right before I started my first church, I could not, I was going to a local church, and it was a great church, and the Spirit of God moved, it was powerful. I had no, no complaints, everything was great, everything was really good, and there was an opportunity to grow. I, was, I wanted to join the praise and worship ministry, and so me and my, me and my friend, we were going to the church, and they were, there was a sign-up day for signing up for ministries, and we had to take a class, and then we got the interview process. And I went through the interview, and I said, I'll join for the praise and worship team, I want to try to play guitar for the praise and worship team. And so I had an interview outside, and I passed the interview, and they were like, yeah, this is great, we'll love. come to the practice here, and then you can start practicing with the team, and shortly thereafter, you'll be on stage, and you'll be doing stuff with the team. And I was like, yeah, fantastic. I went and sat down, okay, before the service started, because all of this was like a half an hour before the church started, and I sat down, and the Lord said to me, do not get comfortable. And I sat down, and I looked over at my friend, and he's and I looked over and I was I knew I was hearing from the voice of the Lord. Our theme is hearing the voice of God. And the Lord began to speak to me. And the, as the Lord spoke to me, he said, do not get comfortable here at this church. I don't have you here. And I said, but Lord, 
I like this church. It's really good. And the Lord's like, remember, I've called you to ministry. You're going to be starting your church and it's going to be soon. So you're going to need to not get comfortable to these areas. So I was like, wow, you're going to be continuing in the ministry. The Lord says, do not get comfortable here. And it was shortly, it was, it was around those days when it was shortly, around those days, it was around those days when I had to leave that visiting that church because I had a home church but I was always visiting that church and the Lord didn't have me there and it was very interesting that the Lord needed me to be flexible and not be comfortable at that place and I'm trying to remember all the details because it was so long ago I think this was after the time when I closed my first church I do apologize this was the time after I closed my first church and I took my time to recover and then I was going to open it again, but the Lord says, I don't have you here. Okay. I do apologize about the details. It's been so many years now. But it was during those, those days when I looked over at my friend at that service. And I remember looking him at the service and I said, man, hey, I'm really sorry. His name is Chris Castillo. Chris, if you're watching this, contact me. Shoot me an email. I miss you, my friend. And I said to him, I said, Chris, I can't get comfortable here. I need to go back into ministry. I need to go back and do our church. I need to do this. And he was like, are you sure? And I said, yeah, the, I love this church a lot. I love visiting here on, on the Saturdays. It's really fun. It doesn't take away from anything else. And I just, But the Lord is telling me in my spirit. I really feel the peace of the Holy Spirit saying, you need to not be here for the future. Because if you get comfortable here joining the ministry, you're not going to be able to be flexible and move. We have to test the spirits, my friends. Because there's times when we'll get excited about something, but just because we're excited does not mean it's a God thing. There's times when God uh, allows us to be a places for a refreshing. You may visit a church, but it doesn't mean it's your home church. You may be listening here, but you, this is not where you're supposed to be always. And you have to be flexible. And I, I'm not telling you, encouraging people to hop from church to church or not get planted or not do ministry, or not do the things they're supposed to do. But I want you guys to know that there's times when it's our own hype that wants to do something because we feel God. Like I preached in the first intro, introductory me messages about how to hear from God. I told you guys on how sometimes there's a voice of our heart that feels really good. And when we feel really good, sometimes we take it as God because it feels good. But not everything that feels good is God. The peace of God is different than the feelings of men, and we have to learn how to discern the differences. Sometimes it could be a deceiving spirit by which we feel good. Sometimes it could be in the form of a woman or man that tries to make us feel good. It feels good, so it must be right. That's where we can invite temptation in, because not everything that feels good is from God. Did it feel good for the man of God to go and prophesy at this and one time my dad, he, I'm not sure why he said this, but I had a conversation with him and we were laughing. He was like, remember, son, the Lord will only prophesy good things. And I said, Dad, what are you talking about? I gently, I said, Dad, that's not what the Bible says. There's lots of examples in the Bible where sometimes the prophecy was not good. And so sometimes it's not fun to prophesy something good. We have to do it with love. But sometimes it's not always a feeling good feeling. But there's still a peace that this is something that needs to be done, needs to be shared. When you're prophesying or hearing from the Lord, you're searching for the peace. You're not searching for the good, feely, feeling vibes. And there's a lot of Christians, especially if you're new in ministry, where you take the message of feeling good as feeling God. And this is where we can become, as the Bible says, in the last days, that they will heap up to themselves people who will give them what their itching ears want to say. Let me give you that scripture real quick. And this is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. And it says this, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine, and instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And it's like people treat church sometimes like it's a buffet. Don't they? Like it's a restaurant. Well, I don't like that restaurant. I'll go to another restaurant. I get it to a degree, especially if you're looking for a church. But there's a point when you have to be submissive to your pastors and listen to your pastors and leaders. I didn't always like my pastors, but God called me to support them in the vision and the ministry and what God called me to do. And 
Sometimes it wasn't fun cleaning toilets or doing mundane ministries, or, but I did what was needed to be done because God had me at that church. I was planted. I was called to serve. If anything, it was so that I would grow where God planted me. Oh, but I just don't like that sermon anymore, so I'm going to leave. Oh, I don't like that style of music, so I'm going to leave. Uh, guys, I've sat through some very bad worship, some really bad. The drum beat was so off, and I was like, oh, I wanted to cry. And I fell down on my knees, and I did cry. And, and my wife at the time, she looked at me, and she said, Are you okay? She said, Oh, how he's being moved by the Spirit. And I was like, Oh, I'm just crying because it's so bad. And I'm like saying, Lord. And all I could do was pray during the worship. So I just started praying during the worship rather than just singing. I could just pray. Because it was so bad. The, key, the singing was all off key. The drums was off key. I make mistakes playing, but this was something else. And I just remember, Lord, oh, gosh. But I was there every Sunday. I was there first to show up and last to leave. One time I showed up so early because the time zone was different. I thought the rapture happened. And I was like, oh, Lord. And then I showed, and then I saw somebody show up in the church that I knew was a sinner. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, I really thought And then, and then they were like, oh, it's just the time. The hours change. Your phone is wrong. And you showed up an hour. I was like, oh, praise God. That's called the rapture scare. Some of you Pentecostal people, you know what I'm talking about. Friends, we don't just serve the Lord because it feels good. Didn't Jesus himself say to Peter, when you were young, you dressed when you wanted to, you dressed how you wanted to, you ate when you wanted to, you did what you wanted to do, and you went where you wanted to go. But when you are old, you're going to be led places you don't want to go. And you're going to be made to do things you don't want to do. And then it says this, Jesus said this to indicate the type of death that Peter would die. Jesus was revealing the future. In a Christian's walk, they don't always get it all with roses and rose gardens. And it's not always because it feels good. Sometimes we serve the Lord out of hardships and persecutions. And praise God, sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're sick. Sometimes you do the things. But that's your reward. When you serve the Lord for His glory as unto Him, praise God because that's where your blessing comes in. All right, friends, let's go to the next part. Let's go back to the story, because you need to hear a second part about the story. Now, an old prophet lived in Bethel. Verse 11. An old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the deeds that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. And he told them all the words which he spoke to the king. And they related the story to their father. The father said to him, Which way did he go, my sons? Which way? Now his sons had seen the way which the man of God came from Judah, and which way he had gone. And then he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode it away. So he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said to him, I am. And he said to him, Come home and eat with me bread. Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot. I cannot return to you, nor can I go with you. Nor will I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. For a command came to me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall eat no bread, nor drink water there. Do not return by the way you are going, by the way which you came. He said to him, I am a prophet like you. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But what? What does it say, guys? But he lied to him. He lied to him. Now, it says this. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house, and drank water. Verse 20, Now it came about, as they were sitting down at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, the old prophet. And it says this, He cried to the man of God who came from Judea, Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord and have not observed the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you. 
but you have returned and eaten bread and drink water in this place of which he said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall not come to the grave of your fathers. And it came about after he had eaten the bread and drunken that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet on whom he brought back. Now when he had gone, a lion met him on the way and killed him. And his body was thrown on the road. And the lion, and his body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside it, and the lion stood beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown in the road, and the lion standing by the body. They came to the city where the old prophet lived. And the prophet who brought him back from the way heard it, and he said, It is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word that the Lord spoke to him. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. And they saddled it. And he went and he found his body thrown by the road, and the donkey and the lion standing behind the body, standing by, beside the body. The lion had not eaten the body or torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the body of the man of God and laid it on the donkey and brought it back to the city to mourn and bury for him. And he laid the body in his own grave. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. After he had buried him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones besides, beside his bones. For the saying that he called out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, against all the houses and the high places that are in the cities of Samaria, Samaria surely they will come to pass. Now, let's talk about it. What just happened? The man of God received the word of the Lord. But when he came and encountered another Christian, this old prophet who longed to reveal, to revile in the glory days, as it were, who maybe he longed for that ministry, maybe that he longed for that touch of the anointing that he used to have. He had to artificially create it. And what he did to artificially create it was lie. And he said, God spoke to me and said this. It's okay for you to come here. Now, what was the fault of the old man? The old prophet, he lied. That was his fault. But what was the fault of the man of God that caused him to be torn? There's two faults. Can you name them? Let's unmute the microphones right now. I want to see if anybody knows the answer. There's two faults that I'm looking for. Maybe there's another, but I'm, I'm, one, I'm looking for the two faults. The big one, you can see in the last part of the scripture. Let's, I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer. Shh, let them try. All right. You guys, are un, you guys are allowed to unmute if you want to unmute. Let's see if you guys know the answer. What was the fault of the man of God, the prophet, who originally heard the word of God. This is important for our word of God, how to hear from the word of the Lord, part five series. Who wants to guess? Two faults. What was, what was his guilt? There was two reasons why he was guilty before God, in a way. First thing is that he didn't obey God when God told him to drink the water or eat the bread. That's right. Disobedience for that. What do you suspect is the second fault that God might find with him? He did not follow the instruction. That's similar to what Mark said. He didn't obey the word that God said not to do. Yeah. What might be? Claudia, say the answer if you can. Oh, God. He never went to the Lord and done. What this guy was saying was true. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. He did not test the Spirit. He did not ask the Lord. Yes, he was disobedient, and God could fault him by that, but 
in all, maybe in his defense, he would say, but Lord, I thought it was you who said this as well. His fault was primarily in the fact that he didn't test the spirits. He didn't seek and say, Lord, is this really you? Like, I know this man of God says this, but is it really you? Is it noble to read the Bible for ourselves? There are certain Christians and sects of Christianity, like in Catholicism. I know there's a lot of Catholic churches that just don't teach the people to read the Bible for themselves. In fact, they make it very difficult. They teach them to read only in King James, for one. Number two, they preach in King James. For lion will be on in thy spirit, and they these eyes and those and thou's. And they speak in a 16th century English, Old English Latin type languages. And it's hard for regular people or people in certain languages and customs, especially if you have a different language, like English is not your primary language. It makes it hard for you to read the Bible. Now, in addition to that, my, gran my grandpa, he would take me to the Catholic Church when we were young, quite often. And I never heard the ministers ever teach the people that they were also supposed to read the Bible for themselves. And it's just not as common. And I want you guys to read the Bible because the Bible says this. Acts chapter 17, verse 11, Melody. Acts chapter 7, verse 17, verse 11 says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they had received the message with great eagerness and examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. They didn't just take the message that they hear online on YouTube and say, wow, that sounded good. It must be God. It feels good. It must be God. How many times have you turned on the television and hear a preacher preaching? But is that what the Bible says? Is the Bible backing up what they're saying? Is what they're preaching in alignment with the scriptures? It's not good for you guys to only hear a preacher preach and not read the Bible for yourself. It's not good for you to only hear a message from a prophet and not seek the Lord yourself for possible confirmation. The Bereans were noble because they were looking in the scripture to see if that's what the man of God was saying was lining up with God. Here the prophet said, an angel appeared to me. But the Bible tells you that, and I said the scripture to someone yesterday. Oh no, Melody preaches this. Melody preaches in our house. We had a Bible study at our house, and she preached this. This is found in Galatians chapter one, verse eight. All the way, yeah, this is the one I mentioned afterwards. But if even if we or an angel from heaven should preach any other gospel, to preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. The Bible says that Satan even masquerades himself as an angel of light. That even an angel could deceive you, my friends. Even an angel could deceive you. So if that's true, and that even celestial beings can come and try to deceive man, I don't care if they're a light being or a Nephilim or one of these Palladian people that you guys hear about, a type of angelic being of any kind. I don't care who they are. If it's not lining up with the word of God, we have to test the spirits. In fact, in the very near future, you're going to see a lot of the you're going to see a lot of deception. You're going to see the governments and news of the world start just telling you flat out in your face aliens exist. They're going to talk about aliens, and they're going to say well, there's different races of aliens, and these aliens are actually good, and they're people. And you'll see aliens start to deceive you and lead a new age movement away from Christ and Him crucified. They're going to say, and they're going to do a mix of technology deceptions and other deceptions, and, and it's going to fool a lot of people because it sounds good, it looks really good, but is it God? The Bible's telling you, if we, or even if we turn around, right? What one of the prophet, he was good in his younger days. In his old days, what? He ended up blind because he wants so much of that anointing again. It's very possible that you can have a minister that's preaching the word of God one day, and I could fail you next week, right? I could fail you. And I could turn away from the Lord. And I can give you a message, and I can distort and twist it. It's for you guys to follow the Word of God and have the Bible inside of you so you know how to hear correctly 
when something's not the word of God. Are you catching what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I do want to say. Sure. 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 I have a lot of, um, when I was uh, with my friends, and I was with them, I had a lot with them. I learned a lot of things from them, how, you know, the Bible, and I'm still, you know, in the baby, uh, Bible. Right? So, for ten years, got married, have children, but I'm more now in my Bible. So, I run into them. And this, you know what they told me? The pandemic thing that's going on. I told them, don't take it. This is not good for you. You know what they told me? No. I'm a pastor now. This is what everybody's doing. Look at every your friend of pastor. They vaccinated themselves. They vaccinated their children. And you are the only one didn't take it. It hurts. It really hurts my feelings. Yeah. You're saying this. They could tell me what I just tried to say to them. They're trying to say they don't do that. And these are the people, are the Christians. They're the Bible scholars. They don't get the uh, lessons from the Lord. I don't get it. It's like when I come back to the Lord, I don't get it, Lord. And the Lord revealed something to me. But that's an, I don't want to take over it. I just want to know that. I have pastors and good and all the scholars in my book. So what we find is that even the most, even pastors, leaders, teachers, evangelists, uh, it doesn't matter who they are. Sometimes they're even tempted to follow what's popular. And I think some of that, you got to be careful, stems from hidden desire to be accepted or fear of rejection. It's if you are scared to stand out and be the one that's the exception, it's a hard life. But if you're scared to do it, that's your fear of not being accepted. It's a fear of getting rejected by society. The Bible says this, my people perish for lack of knowledge. There's things we don't know that hurts us. Okay. There's things that, hurt, that we don't know that actually hurt us. We don't want to perish because we don't know something. We want God to reveal it. Amen? All right. Let's finish up this chapter and then we'll end. Let's talk about this just a little bit further. The man of God said to him, you were disobedient. It's funny. The final, it's funny that God only speaks to the old prophet when he has to tell him. I lied to you, you didn't listen, and you didn't listen to God. You didn't test the Spirit. We need to seek the presence of the Lord to see if God is really the one speaking the prophecy, or if it's really just our flesh. Think about it. In the old man, there's a program inside of him that wants to be accepted and loved. He wants to be heard again. He wants to have that taste of the anointing just one more time and then the young prophet who did something that caused him be, to be greatly rejected inside of him is a program as if it were that wants to be loved and accepted for his gift imagine you have a gift and no one accepts your gift except for god it's a hard life it's a hard life when nobody understands your gift or accepts your gift. It feels rejected. But if that is you, take heart because Jesus also was the greatest gift and even he was rejected by many. The same people who said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David were the same people that said, crucify him, crucify him just days afterwards because they sided with the crowds and what was popular at that time. It is one thing to take a stand for God, when you take that stand, you also need to know that sometimes it comes with a rejection. So I want to put that out. Now this lion ate the man, or he tore him to pieces, and he stood by the body as a sign. And he didn't, it wasn't because he was hungry, and he didn't eat the animal, he didn't even eat the donkey. That lion was there and you knew it was God. Because that lion, if he was hungry, he would eat the man. Lions don't just tear people up to pieces for no reason. Unless they're poked with a stick and instigated, but even then they'll try to eat you. 
This lion, he just told him he didn't eat him. He, his job was to kill and ex execute the punishment of God at that time. That's exactly what happened. It's very careful. Now, it says the prophet brought him back. He felt bad. What did he do? He buried him in his own grave. But I don't like this. The prophet said, when I die, put my bones next to him. Could you imagine that they wake up at the resurrection? Wait, I know you. You're the guy who got me killed. <laughs> I, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Guys, if I get killed by someone who does me wrong, don't. I understand he feels bad. Make restitution to my family. Send them money or something, right? But don't bury me with you. I don't want to see you. You got me killed. <laughs> I know, right? When I die, bury me and make sure my bones are touching his bones. I want my face to be the first face he sees because he's going to be so glad to see me. Oh, gosh. Oh, blind me. Right? I don't want to see you. I don't like you right now. You lied to me. I'm dead because of you. Now, it doesn't say that the man went to hell. It just says that the man did not get to be buried with his father. Now he's going to end up being buried with somebody he doesn't want to be buried with. The liar. Lying causes people to stumble into disobedience. We have to test the spirits to know the difference. Now, let's finish up with these last two scriptures. John chapter 1 verse 41 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Boom! Let's read that again. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Oh, God says this, God says this, God says this, God says this. I don't care if you're a prophet. I don't care if you're a pastor. Oh, God says this, God says this. Does God really say that? Is that really what the scriptures are saying? Is that in alignment with the scriptures? Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Guys, when I'm done preaching, I don't mind. In fact, I encourage you guys to read the Bible yourself. If I'm preaching in alignment with God's word or not. If what I'm saying is what God wants in the Bible, or if I'm just really twisting the scriptures, or just making up. Now, I tell you a joke. I always say, oh, it says in Pastor Song chapter 3, verse 17, that you shall be good to your neighbor and eat Cinnabons on the weekends. And I'll joke like that. I'll say funny things, and when it's me. If I'm telling a joke, I'll shake my head. If you're listening on the podcast version, I'm sorry. You're going to have to believe everything I say. But the Bible says that we're supposed to test the spirits. Now, let's go back into that. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. It's okay to examine everything carefully. Now, I know that, like earlier, I said a story about when I was at that church. And I couldn't remember the timeline, right? I couldn't remember exactly my timeline. There's going to be times when there will be details that would be fuzzy and hazy. But it should not influence the essence of the message. There's times when we embellish the truth. And that's it's like what we know as white lies. We have to be careful and repent of them if you find them. Lord, forgive me, that didn't happen. That didn't happen exactly like that. Do your best to be as close as possible to the truth. Why? Because Jesus is truth. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there's things that are not for everyone to hear. There's details that sometimes you have to omit, or sometimes you have to speak in codes, or speak in riddles. Jesus said this. He said, there are many things that I want to share, but many things you are not now yet ready to hear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will lead you and guide you in all understanding. Amen. Oh, one second. Melody, the keyboard's not working for some reason. Oh, no. Oh. One second, team. Here's the scripture. You need to see it. It's John chapter 16, verse 13. I'll read it to you. I still have much to tell you, but you cannot yet bear it. However, when the Spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own, but He will speak what He hears. He would declare to you what is to come. This is the scripture I just read. King James says it. 
that howbeit when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on it, speak from himself, but whatever he may hear, he will speak. He will declare to you the things coming. We need God's voice as we enter into some of these more dangerous seasons. And those seasons will come. We need God's voice to shine a light in all we do, whether it's cryptocurrency, in the order of many of the prophetic coins, because some of these things are unknown. We can see maps moving into position. We see things, cryptocurrencies that become healthy. We can see when that happens, but we don't ultimately know what will hit its prophetic numbers, the numbers that you hear from the collective prophetic communities. They say these things and that thing. Is that going to happen? We need to seek the Lord for ourselves and test the spirits as well. Lord, did you really say this, or am I just hearing it because... We're excited. I preached one of the messages about how to hear in God, and I talked about our dreams and how sometimes our, we can think about something so much that we dream it ourselves. We, and I mentioned this yesterday to a brother. I said, I don't know for sure, but we need to make sure that we're always doing that. And the brother said, he was Ian, man of God, and he said, yeah, I never have dreams. I said, that's good. So that helps you confirm. When you never have dreams and you finally have a dream, it's sometimes it's a little bit more evidence and more credence that it's something you can believe. But even then, we have to pray about all of our, even our dreams, because our dreams can be influenced. Our ears can be influenced by what we want to hear. Remember I showed you the scripture that in the last days, they'll actually bring people that tell them what they want to hear. So sometimes all the voices we can hear are sometimes the things we're eating, and we sleep on that. Sometimes we're watching the news so much that we start having fearful dreams. Oh, it's the end times, it's the end times, it's the end times. I believe we, I personally believe we have more grace, but sometimes if we're hearing so much of our fears, then we can think, oh, I'm just going to be done. But if we keep the view that it's end times, then sometimes it's, this is, and this is what I want to say about end times. I, no one knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. We just need to be ready. But there's sometimes we can get so scared of end times that we just start hunkering down and not doing anymore. And, and that's, that's not, not the correct attitude we want to have. We want to be victorious to the end. We want to be serving God to the end, whenever He comes back. Whenever, whether and however it looks, whether it's just a final, we're caught up in the clouds with Him, rapture event, or He just steps foot on the earth and everything all happens at once. The big, great judgment. We don't know exactly the, the order of operations. There's a lot of debate, even within the biblical and Christian communities. But one thing we have to do is if we only just try to hunker down and say, I'm just going to wait till the Lord takes me and that's it, then you're not doing your mission. You're not doing what God wants you to do because you're living in fear and the voice that you're hearing is not the voice of God. This series is about how to hear the voice of God. But sometimes our fears also get in that way. And they stop us and they almost paralyze us. When somebody screams, what happens? Whoa, you shock, right? You don't move for a second. You're paralyzed. That's what happens when fear in its ultimate manifest form happens. It starts freezing you and you can't move. You see a scary movie and they, sh they shriek. Ah! You know, everybody says they hold on to the seat and nobody moves, right? They're like, they're, every hair on their end is stand, on their arms are standing here. And for some people, even my chest hair stands up. Like, it's crazy. People get paralyzed by fear. What we want to do is we're walking in the voice of the Lord. So we're not heeding to the voice of fear. Now, it's okay to know what's happening. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. But even then, you've got to keep a balance. If you're watching too much YouTube and too much fear, then it can paralyze you. There's a balance to all things. Put that stuff aside. Go into worship. Enter praising the Lord. And to get the peace of the Holy Spirit because there's a test of the Spirit where the, even Satan, he operates in that fear. So God may want you to know things about whatever this is, right? He may want you to know about some of the government things that they're doing. He may want you to know about some of the hidden plans and evil things and some of the things that are happening around the world to the children and things like that. Some of these things that you have heard. Some of these things that are being made public. The things that they used to tell you were conspiracy theories, but now we're seeing the evidences of them in courts around the world. And then even then they're being covered up, right? We're, we're seeing, seeing that Hollywood's being exposed and all of these things. things. We're seeing all of these things and it's appalling and there's more to come. And it's going to freeze the people. Friends, sometimes you have to take away from the voices and listen to the voice of God.
and just only go in the Lord and only seek in his presence and only get in his presence and only listen to his voice. Keep your eyes on him. Peter sank when he listened to the voice of the winds and the waves. It says, it said in the Bible, when he looked at the winds and when he saw the winds and he saw the waves. When he, how do you see the wind and the waves? By taking your eyes off Christ. That's when you start sinking. So I know stuff is going around. I know it. I get it, friends. I get it. You can look, but be careful looking too hard and too long. And I tell you specifically for the JSON community, if you guys are, especially if you're in our ward room, a member of our church, I want you guys to know, friends, it's tempting to do, to dive too deep into, and I don't want to say the conspiracy, but really the conspiracy. What's, what's actually, actually happening under the things. things. And you, you can, can lose, lose yourself. yourself. I've, I've lost myself years ago, 20 years ago, I lost myself for a time, a season. I, I, I can tell you stories. You, you can lose yourself in those things. things. You've, You've got to come back to the Lord. When we lose ourselves the first place, because we start stop listening to God. The old prophet lied, but the young man of God, he stopped listening to the original voice that God gave him. And he started listening and other, other voices, voices that he wasn't supposed to listen to. Oh, did God say that? Oh, well, okay, let's throw out the plan then. And I'll do a new plan. Because God obviously changed the plan on me and I'll go because you told this guy. And he didn't go and see for himself. Did God want him to take? I understand. Let people on YouTube dive into that stuff. Maybe they have grace for that. Maybe they have anointing for that. Maybe they're prepared. But for you, for some of us in here, we need to almost stay away from some of it. For some of you. You, you got to know, know where the balance is because it can drive a person mad. There's an intel from some intel communities that says the reason it has to be so, ex the exposure of evil has to be slow is because they said some people will even commit suicide if they knew everything. In mass. In mass. Some people will actually go to suicide because it's too much. Important. I'm going to take a second right now. I don't want to put Claudia because in my spirit, I felt Claudia. So I think Claudia has something to say and then she just shared a scripture. Claudia, can you unmute for a second? No, I, Claudia, I feel in my spirit you. Like I felt while I was preaching, the Lord put on me, Claudia. I think you have something to say right now for this recording that people need to hear. Okay, first of all, remember when you were talking about the lying spirits, I sent the Bible verse in First Kings 22, 20, where the Lord talks about the 400 prophets that they were prophesying the same thing, and just one prophet was prophesying the truth. And we have to read everything you know, about it. At the end, it's because a lying spirit was sent from the throne of God. And that was the thing that those 400 prophets of a reason, a lying spirit, and just one said the truth and that one was the one who somebody at his son and his face and all of that. So I put that one because you were saying sometimes um you have to say something that is against what everybody else is saying and you are going to feel rejection and all of that. So in the Bible we have that in Christians you can read it and you can learn all that. And the second thing um uh, when you were talking right now I put let's see Jeremiah twenty three because when I read that, I feel the fear of the Lord. Because people think that, uh, say, oh, the Lord, that is, that is risky. We have to be sure and we have to do it just the way that the Lord shows the things in that thing. So I love Jeremiah, the 23, from 16 to 34, or 35, if you want to. Because it's God talking to the prophet. It's not like a, somebody's reading and the Lord said, no, it's God talking directly to prophets about dreams, false dreams, about false prophecies, about how God made the people go against him, against him and all that. So we have to keep in mind that we have to keep praying for the spirit of the fear of the Lord before he says something. And we always have to pray for confirmation. And it's better if the Lord gives the confirmation to other person because it's better because the enemy is there and he wants to destroy everything. And we think this thing with the wealth chunk, he wants to deceive our hearts. And there's a lot of people that pray and the enemy is showing things that is not God, is the enemy. And, um, and there's something that I would like to talk to you about. <laughs> not recorded. Because okay. I know that it's going to be crazy for anybody. But it's not. But we have to keep praying and, and we have to keep reading that and reading and 
help you the more. And if we said something that he never chose to repent, and if we want to keep listening, you know, just pray to the Lord all the time and just talk when the Lord says we don't have to we don't have to show to all the that the Lord speak to us. Or we don't have to try to be important or more than all the other people because that doesn't matter. <laughs> that is nothing. But we have to be like kids that what the Lord said and um, the only thing that we have to take care is our hearts and uh, keep asking the Lord to cleanse our hearts all the time and repent all the time. That's it. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Claudia. Now, uh, that was a scripture that I didn't preach on today, and maybe we'll just do it another day. But there was a story where the Bible says that there was these 400 prophets about, and it was the same story, and they said to the man of God, the man of God was the only one who said the truth. And he said basically the truth about what was going to happen. And all these 400 prophets came to him, and they said to him, and one of them in particular came up to him and slapped him in the face, and he said, where did the lie, where did, if God is really speaking to you, then why are you doing different? And he said, well, God sent a line, allowed a lying spirit to go to you guys. And they said, he slapped him, and then he said, where did the spirit go when he came from me, when he went to you? Then where did that spirit go? And, he, and the man of God said, you'll find out on the day when you're in the upper room. But it turned out that man was right. The man of God was right, and the other 400 were wrong. It's sometimes possible that people will prophesy just what's popular. We have to seek the Lord. And seek the Lord. And use His grace. And I understand there's some, going to be some contradictions. At the very least, we'll pray God's will be done. God's will be done. Lord, if this is your will, then let it be so. My job, I'm not going to be getting into the details about which prophet's right, which prophet's wrong, and everything like that. I'm just going to let you guys know. Seek the Lord and search His for His peace. Lord, is this for us? Is this for us? Is this for me? Is this for you? Is this for us? And you pray, and you receive. If it doesn't bear witness with your spirit, then don't receive it. Sometimes it's like a watermelon. A prophet once told me, he said, sometimes prophecy is like a watermelon. you got to eat the fruit and spit out the seeds. He said, sometimes it's very conditional. A lot of times, prophecy is conditional. I had another pastor I met not too long ago. He said, prophecy also is conditional. He reminded me, prophecy is conditional. Sometimes God, and how do we know this? Because it's all throughout the Bible that sometimes God said, I'm going to destroy the city. But then what happens? The city repents, and so God doesn't destroy it. God says, I'm going to do this, but the city repents, and then he doesn't do that. There are sometimes God decrees disaster, and the people, the reason He decrees it and lets His people know is so that the people can do something about it and pray and change things. And so sometimes we can actually change a prophecy just by certain things. So we can even delay even end times, even the very end, because we're too busy saving souls, and God's going to say, ah, let's give them more grace. God had decreed that King Hezekiah would die. What well, King Hezekiah did, what did he do? He cried to the Lord. And what did the Lord say? Ah, I'll give him more time. So sometimes prophecy that you hear is even conditional. And sometimes a prophecy that may happen soon can end up happening in a much longer time, even in a time beyond our life. There are certain prophecies that some of these prophets prophesied that didn't even happen in their own lifetime, but came to pass in a time when they were long gone. There are certain people in the Christian community who are ready to crucify the prophets who just because a cryptocurrency did not rise. Are you hearing what I'm saying, team? The foolishness. The nonsense. These people are crucifying people of God with their words and slandering them just because they didn't make money in a season that they wanted to make money. They said it was going to happen this year. The Bible says that the prophets prophesy in part. It says, we know in part, we prophesy in part. And that's coming from Paul, man of God, Apostle Paul. Mighty miracles, people coming back from the dead. Come on now. If a man of God is letting you know that we prophesy in parts and in pieces, then sometimes you got to allow leeway that sometimes people are going to hear from God in pieces. And praise God for the body of Christ. Because we have each other to help. We have all these small groups we're beginning. And in some of the small groups, we're having these discussions during the small groups. And there's some small groups are dedicated just for dreams. And everybody's sharing their dreams. Some of these small groups were having times of prophecy and after prayer and worship. And then we all start saying what we got from the Lord, if we got anything. 
and, and it starts, starts putting pieces, pieces together like a puzzle, and we start seeing a more complete picture. picture. And, and that's, that's how, how it was been revealed, revealed and, that's and that's how it's continued to be revealed, that, that we are like his children and we're putting the pieces together. together. Iron sharpens iron, so as one, one man sharpens another. another. That's, that's what the Bible says. says. Think, Think about this. Think about, about this. God allows us sometimes to hear all in pieces because we need each other. Because we need the body of Christ. That's, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. thing. Let, Let the Lord, praise God. God. If you guys are not part of a community and you want to be a part of our community, be a part of our community. Our community, you can be a part of our community as little as $1 a month on the Patreon. We are going to be launching a new a Telegram events page where you're going to be able to get access to all the small groups and you're going to see when they go live as well as our schedule will be posted there. This is going to be up launching. I believe it's going to be within one week. We're launching our Telegram. It's going to be our events page. And so this is the page where you guys can see and the link will be in the description of these videos. It probably won't be today, but it's going to be really soon. And when those small groups go live, you're going to see them posted and you guys can be a part of them anyone can be a part of them you don't have to even be a part of Patreon. my website is www.patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven that's our website that's where you can find us the link for that is in the description below if you guys want to give to our ministry please you can give please do if the lord puts it on your heart especially some of you guys who belong to our church we want you to remember to give tithe and offering if you belong to a different church give tithe and offering whatever the case is give tithe and offering to the Lord. Um, that, that is going to be one of the prerequisites for entering the wealth transfer. You guys need to be faithful and small so that you can be blessed in much. If you're not faithful in little, how can God bless you in much? And I want you guys to know that even us, we give tithe and offering, right? Everyone has to give tithe and offering to the Lord. I don't, I'm not trying to get your money. I don't care about your money. I care about your obedience because the Bible says, will a man rob God? And they said, no, Lord, we will not rob you. And then he says, yes, but you have robbed me in tithe and offering. So, so there's, there's some, some preachers, preachers that are always scared, scared to talk about money, but the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart is. When, when I'm talking about your money, when, when I'm talking about your treasures, what it is you value, I'm talking about your heart. God gives us the tithe and offering as a test of your heart monthly or whenever you get your income. I want you guys to just be aware that if you guys have a job or you work and you make some income, the give your tithe and offering and give a first fruit to the Lord which is the first of the money spent that's what God wants us the first of your money spent when you're doing your budget set aside God's money first and then let watch what he does watch what he starts blessing the other he asks for 10% watch him bless the other 90 and an offering is anything you give above 10% but make sure you give if you want to give to our ministry you can the, there's ways you can give in the description if you have a local church give to the Lord give it not as unto man but give it as unto the Lord. I always tell you guys that. Give it as unto the Lord. And that's important. All right. Let's close in prayer. Okay. And then after that, we'll, we'll unmute. I'm sure we have lots of discussions about today's message topics and maybe some dreams. We will hear what you guys want to say as well as some things that we cannot record, but it will be available for you guys. All right. Let's close. On the way from Melody. Sorry, guys. Any day now, she's almost ready. I'm so blessed to have Melody. Father, we thank you for this day. And I pray that you would teach us to test the spirits. I thank you for showing us in the word of God what it looks like. Lord, what it looks like when we're being deceived even by false prophets. I thank you for giving us biblical examples as well as giving us experiences in real life. I thank you for the sermon. Praise you for the words. And I thank you and I ask you that you give us grace for all the times we need grace. Let the people be understanding if this message was hard for them, if I preach too mean or aggressive. Lord, may they give me grace. But may I seek to please you in all circumstances, in all things. Heal our body, Lord, um, because we've been a little under the weather. Heal us, God. Heal our body. Bring our throats and our noses back to full health. And I pray that you would just be glorified and magnified in whatever's to come. We will seek your face. We will seek you for the answer. And we'll seek the discernment on what you're saying, Father. Because we need to hear from you. And they need to hear from you. We need to hear from your spirit. We need your spirit. We need to make sure that what these prophets are saying are in alignment with the word as well. We need to make sure, Lord, that we test the spirits. We need to test even the preachers that are preaching. Are they preaching in alignment with the Word? Am I teaching in alignment with the Word? 
examine everything, the Bible says. It even says to examine ourselves. Am I misinterpreting? Am I hearing things wrong? Am I just hearing only because it feels good? And give us grace for anything we may miss and everything that's in between. And the doctrinal differences give us grace in between them. And in all cases, let them all have peace. Let them have peace. If they have complicated questions, let them ask their pastors and their leaders. For those who are belong to our word room, let them ask me. Let them ask their leaders. I pray that you would just grow all of them in our grace, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that you would make them to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Give them strong discernment. That when you tell them one thing, and an enemy tells them another thing, or if somebody lies to them and tells them another thing, may they have discernment in their spirit to know something's wrong. Sense when something is wrong. That they're hearing something contrary. As the Bible said, if we or an angel or anyone else preaches any other gospel, let them be under a curse. And I pray that we will not hear the li heed the lies, but seek the truth. And seek the truth of your spirit. To speak the truth of prophecy. Bring clarity, Lord. Bring clarity. We need your presence. And we will seek you. And we will invite your spirit. We trust you, Lord. And we depend on you for everything. I love you for your grace. I love it so much. May you bless them. May you keep them. Make your face shine upon them. Lift up your countenance towards them, Lord. Be abounding to them with grace. Be gracious unto them. And give them peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll be right back for some fellowship team. Amen.